Now, disclaimer. That shit is corny. Bullying is corny. But being on an island forces you to become a more savage version of yourself. Because, you know, it's either eat or get ate. It's your boy, Nate Almighty, aka the Global Dark Skin Ambassador. So today we're going to talk about extortion and a typical court date in Rikers Island, C-74. I can only speak on C-74 because I never went to any other building except for, um, uh, I forgot. It starts with a B. I went there when I was in a box, but I only been out in population the C-74. So here we go. Now, a typical day in court in Rikers Island, right? You will be woken up early in the morning. Uh, they will tell you you have court. So you basically getting up earlier than everybody else. You will wash your face. Uh, brush your teeth if you want. You know, handle your business like that. Uh, you will get dressed and someone will come and get you and bring you to the bullpen. When you in C-74, they got the people going to Bronx Court in one bullpen, the people going to Manhattan Court in one bullpen, so on and so forth like that, based on the borough. Now, immediately when you get to the bullpen, You'll have uh, people clicking up. The people who know each other, uh, they're already huddling up. They chilling. Uh, you know, they cracking jokes. Uh, before everybody gets shackled up, they already talking about the uh, snacks and stuff that they snuck in. That they're going to sneak into the bullpen. Sneak into court. Because we really not supposed to have nothing. And... It goes like that, but they automatically looking for prey, meaning they looking for pussy niggas, niggas to extort. And what I mean by niggas to extort, this was a time where I, I believe that they got everybody wearing jumpsuits and khakis now. But when I was in Rikers Island, everybody was wearing regular clothes. So they would allow you to wear, uh, I guess, little tiny chains. They allow you to wear earrings. And if the clothes are not like all blue or all red, they'll allow you to wear whatever clothes you want to wear. So people are already in the bullpen looking for people to extort. Now, how the extortion goes is if people spotting you and nobody knows you, you could automatically become a victim. Now, they will wait until police is not around. You know what I'm saying? And uh, they might try to get you before you even get on the bus to go to court. Uh, or they'll at least be plotting on you and they'll call dibs and say, okay, once we get on the bus or once we get uh, to, to, to the courthouse and we in the cells, this nigga is mine. You feel me? So, before you get to the uh, the buses, you know, they, uh, they shackle everybody. So, everybody gets shackled together. But before everybody shackled together, going into the courthouse, they shackle you by twos. So, your waist... Your waist is shackled. These bugs out here wilding. Your waist is shackled. Um, your 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 wrists is shackled together, and your ankles are shackled together. But it's two people at a time. So, depending on who you are and who you're shackled to, you're gonna have a rough time. Being, once they sit you down. 
and you shackled, they had these things called pin numbers. Now, pin numbers are when everybody gets to Rikers Island, everybody has a pin number, and they tell you not to tell anybody your pin number because you need that pin number in order to make phone calls. You'll have somebody sitting next to you that claim they tougher than you. They view you as prey. They'll say, hey, give me your pin number, nigga. Now, the average pussy nigga is just going to give his pin number up. Uh, maybe he plans on being there for a while. He don't want no problems. Or maybe he know his case is bullshit and he leaving anyway. So he'll give his pin number up. Now, certain niggas, though, they might think that they tough enough to say no. Now, if you say no to a request from a bully on Rikers Island, you have to be prepared for immediate violence. Okay, so... um. I used to participate in the bullying, but once I was there for about six months and stuff like that, I realized that shit was corny, so I stopped. But this is how I went. I would be like, hey, bro, what's your pin number? And let's say he shackled to me, and we sitting together, but he closest to the window. So, boom. Let's say he say no. Okay? I would automatically say word because you cannot, you have to immediately be violent in order to show that you're not playing with niggas. So I'd be like, yo, give me your fucking pin number. Like, what's up, nigga? What's good? And nigga might be like, no. So immediately, you got to slap the shit out the nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, so you slap the shit out the nigga. Usually he gets scared and will start writing down his pin number for you. You know what I'm saying? So then you take the pin number, you good. And then you don't have to say nothing else to the nigga for the rest of the day unless you see something else that he got that you want. But now, moving on to the actual uh, courthouse. You get to the courthouse. Mind you, I am from 161st in the Bronx. So the Bronx courthouse is literally right next to where I grew up at. So imagine being... From 161st, the courthouse is on 161st, and you pass in your neighborhood every single time, knowing you're not going home. Like, trash. It's horrible. Trust me. But anyway, you get inside the bullpen. Everybody has to go through metal detectors. This, that, and the third. You feel me? Everybody go through metal detectors. If you're lucky enough to sneak your little snacks in, you sneak your little snacks in. Boom. So. Once you get to the bullpen, the police don't really want to be watching niggas like that. So they huddled up somewhere else, having their little talks, their little discussions, not worrying about people. Now, this is where shit gets spicy. Now, the people who feel like they tough, they're already looking for people to extort. They already start asking questions. Yo, who are you? Whatever, whatever. Where you from? If you from a hood that they got beef with, they automatically... Beating on you. Beating on you. If you're lucky, they'll ask for the one on. But it's automatically going down. They asking for pin numbers. And if you ain't give your pin number up already, be prepared to fight. Or give up your pin number. You know what I'm saying? So, also, if you got jeans, Jordans, niggas like, yo, come off them Jordans or we smoking you right now. You know what I'm saying? The average nigga going to give up his Jordans because he don't really want to smoke. Now, people do real fucked up shit to people in the bullpens, you know what I'm saying? Like, being a part of a gang and uh, your gang not being real or sanctioned according to another known gang could be very costly. Um, at the very least, you're going to get beat up. At the very least, you're getting beat up. But an example of what I've seen is... Being that I was neutral, but I was cool with gang members, uh, I would instigate, you feel me? Like, like I see a dude, and I'd be like, yo, bro, where you from? Yo, um, you blood, you crip? Me not having nothing to do with blood or crip. I'm like, yo, you blood or you crip, bro? And the dude might say, he blood, and I'd be like, yo, what set is you? He might say his set. And if I never heard of that set, I'm going to be an instigator. I'm going to go to the tough blood nigga that I know, and I'm going to be like, yo, this nigga say he blood. Like, you heard this nigga set? Uh-uh. Straight instigating. And one time I did that, 
And the blood guy that I know, he was like, yo, nigga, your set is full. He like, yo, matter of fact, take them sneakers off. I want those. Nigga tries the front, boom, boom. He like, yo, take those fucking sneakers off, yo. So nigga get scared, take over sneakers. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I just participated in the nonsense. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, so now the nigga like, yo, stand up. Matter of fact, stand in the toilet. So mind you, in the cell, it's one toilet. It's a steel toilet. And if you smart, you try not to have to use because if you got to take a shit, you got to take a shit in front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? And people who take a shit and sting up the cell, they get beat up for that too. Like people really find excuses to beat people up for everything. You know what I mean? So, so I remember just helping to antagonize this, this dude. And my man's is like, yo, give me them sneakers, stand in the toilet. And this is no lie. Niggas making niggas stand in the toilet or they're making them slap box other pussy niggas for their enjoyment. But this particular day, he made whoever this nigga was stand in the toilet. So, you know, I'm amping it. I'm like, yo, take your socks off, nigga. Put your socks in your mouth. Nigga like, yo, nah, I ain't about to do that. My feet already wet. Blah, blah, blah. I'm about to call CO. I'm like, call CO. I'm going to knock you out, nigga. We going to spank you in, nigga. We going to kill you when you get back to the island. You know what I'm saying? Just gassing it, being real fucked up. So this kid actually took off his socks that been in the toilet water, boiled them up, and put it in his mouth and held it there. And we made him stand like that for like 15 minutes at least until we heard the COs coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, like so moral of the story is if you pussy... It will be very bad for you to go to court. You're going to have a long day. Now, disclaimer. That shit is corny. Bullying is corny. But being on an island forces you to become a more savage version of yourself. Because, you know, it's either either get eight, kill or be killed. You know what I'm saying? I did a lot of things I regret. But over time there... Especially when I started going to the box and doing reading and stuff, I started to regret a lot of things that I did and I started changing, you know what I'm saying, before I left that place, you know. Um, so like I said, don't go to jail because if you go to jail and you pussy, you're going to have a rough time because this is what's the most fucked up thing about it. You get up real early in the morning, you go to court, you at court all day, right? You see your lawyer briefly. They tell you what's about to go down, right? Then you go see the judge. And out of the whole day you spent in there, you only see the judge for two to five minutes. And then they just remand you and send you back to the bullpens for another court date. So is it really worth it to go to jail? No. Especially if you pussy.